Good day everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are making an 1820s wool dress. Alright, welcome to the cutting out portion. So, I'm using my own bodice pattern that was drafted for me by a friend. And so it's not a commercial pattern or anything, it's just my own pattern. And I cut it apart and swooshed it out, if that's the phrase we can use. And so it's going to be like a very gathered bodice. This is a nice wool uh, fabric, a nice light wool from Burnley and Trowbridge, if I remember correctly. Um, one of their greens, not the light one, it's the dark green. I think it's called Saxon green. I don't actually know. But we're going to cut this. To free thing. I like to freehand things, so that's just kind of how I do it. I'm going to take the bottom pattern off, and then we're going to cut off about, I think, an inch for a little waistband. Maybe an inch, nah, an inch and a half. We'll do an inch and a half for a waistband. And you cut off an inch and a half for the bottom. And you just, for all my pieces, cut off an inch and a half for my waistband. lining in a second. I'm going to go ahead and cut off the bottom of this. So the sleeve pattern is one from the Workwoman's Guide. Uh, Workwoman's Guide is later than what I do for 1830s, but the sleeve shapes are right. You just kind of have to, you know, go to originals first and see what's right and what's not. But some things need to be changed for the Workwoman's Guide. So I'm going to make this a little bit longer, I think. Uh, this, I believe, is figure 15 and 16, if I remember right off the top of my head. line these sleeves. I don't think I did the last wool dress. Well, maybe I did. I think I did. We're going to line them anyway. Regardless. Alright, so that should give me two sleeves. So these are going to be nice and full sleeves. Alright. Cutting lining next. And then we can start working on the skirt. The skirt I cut out, I cut 45 inch long panels, which is longer than I am tall. Well, longer than the skirt needs to be finished, but of course we're going to fold it in the top because that's how we do things in the 1830s and throughout most of the 19th century. And then um, I cut two and a half panels. So my fabric is about 55 to 60 inches wide. So two and a half panels of that. Um, this is going to be a back opening bodice or a back opening dress. So I did my half panel in the front and then two full panels uh, to make it the side and the back and it's going to open up where the two big panels meet. So I'll come back um, whenever I have all this cut, and then we will finish sewing up the skirt. Alright, sewing together the sides. Now this is the facing that we're putting on. I chose a um, 
variety of facey fabrics. I think I have three on this hem. So I like a blue plaid and a green fabric and I have pink fabric too. Um, that's just, and I find it an easy way to make a dress a little bit more working class. And that's not to say that you don't see working dresses with a solid um, lining or just one lining. It's not to say you don't see dresses of more wealthier people using um, excess fabric like that. It's just, I would say, more common in working class clothing to be using the scraps that way. So I just pulled some scraps out and made a facing. All right, now that I iron that up, I think I'm going to go ahead and balance the skirt. And I don't know if we want to pleat it or we're going to bodice first. I haven't decided that part yet. Bodice pieces get sewn together first. So this is just uh, the side front and the side, or the front and the side back being sewn together at the side seams. Next door of the business is to sew together the sleeves, which, well, I sewed them together. I am putting on a little cuff, I suppose. Gathered up the uh, bottom of the sleeve very lightly. It's not nearly as gathered as I thought it was going to be. And I'm just setting it to a band. I'm going to put a gathering thread at the other end. So we can just set this into the arm side in just a moment. I'm going to finish this first. Alright, <clears throat> so changes have been made since um, I last spoke to you, which was probably several months ago. Um, because the dress never got done because it wasn't, it was too warm to need a wool dress. So I had the time to get it done, I decided not to, it wasn't worth it. So um, since then I have come across an 1820s event I want to attend and no 1820s dresses. So this is going to turn into an 1820s dress instead of a very early 1830s dress. And really the only thing I have to change to make it so is to change the sleeves. So the bishop sleeve, from what I can tell, came into fashion in 29. This event I'm going to is a 27 event, so no bishop sleeves. There may be one fashion plate that's 28, but still, I can't wear bishop sleeves to an 1827 event. So I've taken the sleeves out, and I'll probably use it for something else, but I have lots of extra fabric, so I'm just going to cut new 20-ish style sleeves. So poofy on top. Um, graduated towards the bottom uh, not nearly big as big and poofy as the later 30s stuff but you know poofy sleeves right now I'm working on the waistband I have cut out the sleeves that we've already put in um, and I've cut out the pattern that I'm going to use for the sleeves I just haven't cut out the sleeves from the fabric and done all that mess I figured I'd get the piping done first And I think I am going to close this with hooks and eyes. Probably five, one at the top, bottom, middle, and then in between. I think that's what I've decided. I did, um, the other dress I was working on at the same time as this dress, I did that in uh, ties, which works fine. It's just, I think we pinned the middle part which is probably easily fixed with adding another tie in the middle. I would just rather do hooks and eyes. I've experimented with the whole tying of clothes. I prefer hooks and eyes. All right, so just whipping the waistband down. Trying to only catch the lining fabric as opposed to the lining and the fashion fabric. And 
And why, yes, there is a different lining fabric on the waistband than in everywhere else. I couldn't find the waistband I cut, so I had to cut a brand new one. I didn't have any extra of that fabric. So, apparently we're playing a really fun game called How Many Different Types of Fabric Can We Put Into One Dress? To be fair, I really love that game, though, so... I think historically I've seen, the most I've seen is seven. <clears throat> Six, of course, being lining fabrics and the one fashion fabric, so. I don't know if I did two or three different ones on the skirt. We're already on two different ones in the bodice. And probably a third completely different one for the sleeves, to be honest. So... We're right up there at that seven. So I think we're gonna skip filming the hooks and eyes <clears throat> just for time's sake. And I will see you back with cutting new sleeves. All right, here's the sleeve we're gonna use. It's a highly modified version of figures three and four from the Workwoman's Guide. Um, that shape really looks like a 20 shape to me. It just says it's for an older child. So I definitely had to enlarge it quite a bit. Um, I actually enlarged it a lot and then I ended up having to add three more inches because this inseam needs for me to be at least 20 inches. So I got it 20 inches. I cut down this part quite a bit because it's supposed to be fitted and because I enlarged it so much it wasn't going to be fitted. So I cut that down. I kind of changed the shape slightly um, to connect better. Other than that it's basically the shape. So this is what we're going to go with. It should give me a lot a much smaller poof than what you typically see in the 30s because we like poof in the 20s but we don't like poof yet we're not on whatever the people in the 30s are doing not yet anyway we're getting to that point okay and I'm probably I may do a small inch cuff or something. Um, but I'm going to need to cut another one of these. I'm going to need to cut lining. And then we'll be in business. I'm going to go ahead and cut off this bit. Usually I do this later, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Just keep this. All right, so there's sleeve number one. It's definitely going to be a much smaller poo, but that'll be work. That's what we want. Sewing in the sleeves. <clears throat> so they've been sewn together. I added a cuff. I have not added the hooks and eyes I'm going to put on there. Can't decide between buttons, buttonholes, or buttons and loops, and hooks and eyes. I've decided to go with hooks and eyes. So I've not done that yet, but I am just sewing. But I'm just sewing the sleeve into the actual armhole with the back stitch. Not a particularly nice back stitch, but a back stitch. Alrighty. So, very last step on this dress, putting the skirt to the bodice. Which we're just taking bites out of the skirt and then bites out of the piping, just above the piping line, but not all the way through because we don't want to see the stitches on the other side. We're about to get to the place of gauging. I think that is the place of gauging. Double that stitch. And yeah, I might as well triple it. Why not? Okay. Where is here's the end? each and every pleat to the waistband itself. 
every little dang pleat. But after this is done, we'll have a finished dress. Then I guess start on other dresses for the event. Because I need to make an 1820s wrapper and I need to make one more dress. I need a front opening gown. Just in case something happens to a lady I'm staying with. And she's not and she's not able to make it or, you know, whatever uh, needs to happen. She has to leave early or whatever. Just need to make sure I can get dressed. Clothes are important. Although I do enjoy every once in a while giving lectures on women's underpinnings. Not really something that's easily done in a first person situation. So I will finish this and I'll see you with a completed dress. Here we are. So beautiful dress. I shouldn't have done up the cuffs yet. But um, I wore it in February. It turned out so nice. Uh, very nice to have that wool dress actually because it got pretty cold one or two of the days. It got pretty cold at least once. So I ended up um, definitely being glad that I had it. Uh, and so yeah. Not having sleeve puffs in there right now, but there's my little 1820 sleeves. I actually love this style bodice. There's lady. Hi, big girl. What you doing? You want attention? Yeah. But this style bodice is like my favorite style bodice. Um, with the low neck, um, my chemise is showing, and I'm wearing an 1860 chemise. Uh, it's got my 1830s one. But I love the, the gathery bit and of course the waistband and it's not done up in the back right now because I don't have anyone to actually do that for me. So it is just loose in the back. But I've worn it so I know it fits and I'm also not wearing the right corset. I'm wearing my wraparound corset so I don't know if that would change anything as far as whether it fit or not anyway. So um, this is the dress. I, it's a beautiful color. I love the green uh, sleeves. I love the 20s so much. Just so much I love this. I love the 20s. I mean it's poofy and it's it's like it's 1830s but elegant is what I like to say. So I'm not quite as big of a poof, but the poof is still there. And and you can have this style bodice in the 30s, that's fine. Fill it in with a neck uh, with a neckerchief or a cover it with a pelerine, but you can also leave it like that, that's fine too. And I just happened to wear my pomegranate cap today. But uh, that's the dress. I don't think it could have turned out much better um, for what it is now. I do still have the 30 sleeves, so I can change out these sleeves and make it a more early 30s dress, which is great because that's you know, a little bit more variety. Um, so I'm glad I did that, but now I also have the 1820 sleeves, so I can also wear it for 1820 stuff. I'm keeping it as an 1820s dress because I do technically have a wool 1830s dress already, the blue one. So I figure I'll keep this one as 20s unless I happen to need two 1830s wool dresses. Then I can change out the sleeves real fast. It'll take me 10 minutes and I can have an 1830s dress. And then uh, I'll change it back when I need a 30s dress again. Oh, I don't think I've met the boys yet. Here, baby. Yes. So, boyfriend's historic site, had some kittens, one of them passed away, we took the other two in. Yes, so this is... Um, they were feral cats, and because they were feral, they were, uh, we refer to them as spicy, which just means that they were not very nice because they were feral and not friendly for you. So we called them spicy for the longest time, and then we ended up calling one of them chili, and this is Cayenne. This is baby Cayenne, who is a sweetheart. I'm not his favorite human in the world. That belongs to my boyfriend. Um, but he will tolerate me when the boyfriend is not here, which is what's going on. So this is Cayenne. Brother looks just like him, except brother has more orange on him. So we met, we got some new kitties. They're going to eventually be barn cats, but they're with us until we have a place. A place to put y'all. You can get it right. Yes. So, you can see they're not very spicy anymore. Especially this one. This one's a sweetheart. You just gonna hang out here? Okay. <laughs> so, all the pets are coming over today. Well, two out of the five, so I guess it's still less than half. 
But I do really love these wools, um, the uh, wool stuffs from Burnley and Trowbridge. This is the second dress I've made from them, and I actually absolutely adore them. They're really nice light wools. They're not super light. They're, they're light, but they're not, they're not medium weight, but they're not truly a lightweight dress. Like, you would never look at this and think it's a cotton. Uh, where I have handled wools, and I have worked with wools that, until someone tells you that they're wool, you can't tell. They literally feel like a quilting cotton. They're very light and very um, flowy like that. But this is still definitely a wool, but it's not a meat. I wouldn't call it a medium weight wool. I'd still call it a lightweight wool, just not a very lightweight wool. And it does come in a variety of colors. Their colors kind of change, so sometimes you'll find different colors um, than others. So I, right now, I don't think they're selling this color at all, but I think they have a lighter green, um, lighter Saxon green, and um, like they have a purple now that they didn't have before. So it kind of just varies when uh, what the colors they get, but it's good stuff. I recommend it. Really nice to work with. Easy to hand stitch through, um, which both of the ones I've made have been hand stitched. But that is essentially the green wool dress. I look forward to many other times of wearing it. We need more 1820s events in Texas because there's not a ton of them, and I like the 20s. So we might have to do something about that. But uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you back here on Monday.